Jeremiah 2 and 33. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Why do you trim your way to seek love? Where we should be seeking justice, where we should be seeking true independence, where we should be seeking true freedom and liberty and autonomy? No, we come out here on the 4th of July and we say, freedom, 1776 we was on plantations. Like I said, a hundred years later, we were fighting on the side of a war to keep ourselves in chains and in shackles. Iniquities of they fall, bloodthirsty is subordination. Not for living war, waiting to put that work in. Hamashiach gives that up, perpetual order. For all his sons and his daughters, won't fill the cities with his faces. Iniquities of they fall, bloodthirsty is subordination. Not for living war, waiting to put this work in. Hamashiach gives that order. Leviticus 11, I'm keeping the diet, I'm causing a riot like back in the 80s. They be like, pretty much, we are going to explain to our people our true heritage and nationality. Right? Because as black people here in America, there's there's things that we lack as a community. We lack our identity, right? We lack our language, we lack our customs, we lack everything that we had when we was brought over here on boats. From the time we was let off the ship until today, things have been stripped and taken from us. Right? So if I ask you for what land were you brought from or where your ancestors brought from, what would be your answer? The kingdom of heaven? So you're telling me the white man went to the kingdom of heaven, grabbed us from there, and brought us here to America, and then took, a, took, a, took us away from who we are? Your ancestors. Would you say that you're a product of the transatlantic slave trade? You're a descendant of those that were, that were affected by the transatlantic slave trade? So-called black man. So-called Negro, so-called African-Americans. How did the so-called African-Americans get to America? transatlantic slave trade, right? They went over to the western shores of Africa, they loaded us on the ships, transported us across the Atlantic Ocean, and dropped us off on the eastern part of what we now know as America, right? So from there, like I said, they let us off of boats, they stripped us, uh, stripped us of our heritage, our nationality, our identity, and then they turn around and start making us or calling us Americans, right? Hundreds of years pass, and then they turn around and, and America establishes their independence. Less than 100 years after that, we know what happened? Black people. People like me and you, our ancestors had to fight on the side of a war to continue and further our enslavement or to continue and further us working on plantations. And this is a hundred years after America established their independence. Me and you had to sit up here and fight on the side to keep ourselves enslaved and in chains and shackles. What sense does that make? Now, that same type of mentality and idea is perpetuated throughout the world because we have our people selling dope to each other. We have people, our people robbing and stealing from each other. We have our people gang banging and fighting with one another. That all puts them where? Back in them same shackles and in them chains, right? Back in that same oppression, right? I see you double back, man, you got a question? You double back, man, you got a question? Let me show you your national. You got a preset? Bring it up. No, bring your preset because you had a mouth. No, no, no. You got me 28. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 and it shall come to pass that thou shalt if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God hearken diligent means to listen if we were to give a diligent ear and listen to the words of God and the commandments of God read to observe and to do all his commandments our God because a lot of times the people just use this general statement this general term that they think applies to everybody no this is something that's very specific to me and you that's why I spoke to our, me and your specific condition, specific treatment and experience in this place, and specific uh, 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 situation or occurrence that happened within our history. This hasn't happened to anybody else. You know who it has, has happened to? So-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Indians. We are the same people. They've drove a wedge between us, created a, or a divided us into three separate demographics, and caused us to hate one another. And then within those demographics, caused them to hate one another and more division. So think about the fight. Think about the process that it would take for all of us to be able to unify and join back together. That would have to be a real powerful and spiritual thing, which is actually happening in the world today. So we can also, just off that alone, see the divine inspiration and influence that the Most High, our God, has had within us. And we read it right here in His Word. It's been with us our whole life. Read. So, it says, so it says that we listen diligently unto these words that have been commanded to us, read. Which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Right now, would you say that all three of us, black, Hispanic, Native, Native Indians, are we on high above all nations on the earth right now? 
can you give me one aspect where we are? Are we there financially or, or economically? Are we there politically? Are we there socially? We're not there on, on any level. You want to know why? Because our greatness has been taken advantage of and manipulated. So anytime we want to display and, and, and showcase our greatness, somebody else is making money off of it. Your rappers, your politicians, your athletes, your actors, everybody, they give us the crumbs from which they make billions off of for years on end. And then they pay us a residual or they pay us a, a royalty, which is pennies on the dollar. See what I'm saying? This is why uh, uh, our, our beloved brother Dave Chappelle had to come out and he had to take a stand because we they put ourselves in a, in, in a position where we're young and we're ignorant and we're immature and we have to sign our lives away just to try to get ahead in life. But now is the time, man, where we're waking up out of this deep sleep that we've been in and we're about to take back what's ours. Not only just our greatness and the profit that we can get from it, but our dominion, man. Our, definitely our our autonomy, definitely our authority and rulership. Because when you look at these people, look at these people, man. These are the people that's ruling over us. We got to sit up here and communicate in English. This is the type of stuff we have to do. We got to take back what's ours. What's your precept? Book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted. This is not your rest because this place is polluted. You smell that ocean right there? That shit stinks. You know why the ocean stinks? Because all of the different things that our God created to sanitize and clean the ocean, they take it out and then they feed it to you at $38 a, gal uh, uh, $38 a pound, $40 a pound. And then they plaster it all over the internet, all over the media, and make us feel like that that's the thing that we have to ascend and and and. and build and grow up to be able to obtain shrimp, lobster, crab, catfish, oysters, squid, all those things are supposed to clean the ocean. So when they take it out, it's no one, they, they take the they take the janitors of the sea out and then they pump poison and dirt and trash into it. And that's why it smells like that. All right, you from San Diego? I'm from San Diego born and raised. I've been smelling this ocean my whole damn life. It's been smelling like this and it's getting worse. You can start smelling this make it off the damn freeway now. Right? Go ahead. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you. It shall destroy us, read. Even with a sore destruction. Even with a sore destruction. And then that destruction that we're talking about is going to go back to what we were reading earlier. Have we listened to the words of God and our God that's going to benefit us? Then we're going to be put on high. If we don't, this is the type of stuff we have to deal with. Because the people in the position of power right now, they do things, everything contrary to God. And you know what else is contrary to God? You know who you are. You loving yourself. So you have the ability to love your brother, love your wife, love your kids, and love your whole community. We don't have that. And then what? We have division. We have separation. And the scripture says, what? A house divided shall not stand. And that's why we're not standing right now. We're on our knees. And our people are out here celebrating a day that has nothing to do with their, uh, with their independence, salvation, or liberation. What was that? Two weeks ago, we celebrated Juneteenth which was supposed to be a day in which we was free and let off and liberated and let off of the plantation. But it's something called the Emancipation Proclamation, which was even allowed us to be let off of the plantation. The word emancipate means to transfer owner. It has nothing to do with freedom at all. We are living in a, in a down, low place, and it's ignorant, and we have to come into a level of knowledge about ourselves so we can do better. And that knowledge, first and foremost, is knowing who the Most High God is, who the Most High God is for, and when you learn who he's for, you learn that he's for you. Not because, oh, I'm a child of God and I believe. No, because you're an Israelite from one of the various 12 tribes, his chosen people. Read. That was it on that? Go back to that in the um, Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So we talked about it earlier. If we did listen, we will be put on high above all nations of the earth. This is for the black, Hispanic, and Native Indians, right? But if we don't listen, let's see what's going to happen. To observe to do all his commandments we need to observe and do all his commandments read and his statutes and his statutes which i command thee this day again one thing that we said they're talking about don't eat this abominable things in the sea which is supposed to be there to clean it these are the doo-doo boo-boo dirt grimy eaters of the sea why do we make this a delicacy why do we make this a thing to where if i want to impress a girl i gotta go and take her to a restaurant while i'm gonna feed her stuff the red lobster and crab hut and get these big old crab boils. And, and all of this is supposed to be impressive? 
Since when do we impress our women with shit? That's, that don't make no sense. Isaiah 29. What you got? This is the book of Isaiah 65 and 3. Go ahead. A people that provoked me to anger. It says a people, us, that have provoked God to anger. Why we provoke God to anger? Because it requires more from us. You got kids? You know what you require from your kids. You know you want your kids to definitely represent themselves as well as their parents and, and their people on a high level. And when they don't, they can provoke you to anger and disappointment, correct? This is how, God, this is how the Most High God feels about the Black, Hispanic, and Native Indians. But it's an opportunity for us to get back to that when we learn who we are and gain more knowledge. Read. It says, Contun continually to my face that sacrifice sacrifices in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments which eat swine's flesh. All of our doings, sacrificing, dwelling in these in these temples, in these false temples and false idols and monuments. And it says do what? Eating swine's flesh, right? We know what swine is, right? Go ahead. And broth, and of, broth of what? Of abominable things. Do you know what that broth of, ab of abominable things is? You, ever, you guys know what seven sea soup is? You guys know what seven sea soup is? I know Pops know what seven sea soup is, right? Because they sell, listen, this is something that we eat and that, that they sell amongst our people. Seven, that broth, what they sit up here, it's, it's like a it's like a it's like a jambalaya or it's like a, a, a gumbo. The broth of abominable things. The scriptures tell us that all of the creeping critters of the sea are abominable. Right? We can't eat those things. And what we do is we boil it all up into a nice gumbo over a bed of rice. And we think that this is just such a delicacy, this is the greatest thing in the world. Grandma cooking gumbo, mom's cooking gumbo, auntie's cooking gumbo, or oh, I need to come over. Or if I gotta work, make sure y'all put me a plate up. This is what the Lord is saying is an abominable thing, and it's being provoking him to anger. Continue. Read. It says, and broth of abominable things Read. in their vessels, which say, stand by thyself, come not near to me. For I am holier than thou. And then we turn around, and this is stuff that they'll sell this broth in the Christian church. They'll sell a gumbo plate and a gumbo bowl, a bowl at church, but turn around and call themselves holy. You know what the word holy means? It's not this, this spooky thing where it's like, if I touch you, you just get this ray of sunlight that beams upon you. No, the word holy just means separate. When are we going to come out and be different and separate ourselves from the people that have never had our best interests at heart? What's your precept? Hold that. Give me uh, 2 Corinthians 6. Start at 14. We got to be separate from these people. You know what we've been doing since we got off of the plants? I mean, since we got off the boat? We've been trying our best to figure out a way to get love from them. What do we have to do for you to stop treating me so mean and so you would just love me? We don't need that. Give me um, Jeremiah 2.33. Finish it. Go ahead. It says, these are a smoke in my nose. It says it's a smoke in your nose. If you ever been a, been around something that was an irritation to you, if you've been around something that's on fire, not the people like the guns of smoke in their nose, right? Which is an irritation to your body that you might not even be aware of, aware of, but you've developed this idea that's okay. But anytime you have some thick black smoke in your face, it's an irritant. This is how the Lord says that what we do is and how he feels about it. Read it. It says a fire that burneth all the day. A fire that burns all the day. Give Jeremiah 2 33. It's Jeremiah 2 and 33. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Why do you trim your way to seek love? What? Where we should be seeking justice, where we should be seeking true independence, where we should be seeking true freedom and liberty and autonomy. No, we come out here on the 4th of July and we say, Freedom. 1776, we was on plantations. Like I said, a hundred years later, we were fighting on the side of a war to keep ourselves in chains and in shackles. Makes no sense. It makes no sense for a few years after that, right? The Civil War, a few years after that, they let us off, let us off of plantations and then they create laws to put us back in prison. Laws, vacancy laws. Prison laws, what they call, it used to call, be called black laws, designed to put us in prison. That's why we are, what, 60% of the prison house now. America is 25% of the world's prisoners. We are one-fourth of the world's prisoners, and then 66% of those are so-called black, uh, so blacks. Then you get into a whole other percentage of Hispanics and a whole nother percentage of Native Indians. It's a very small percentage of the people, if anybody outside of that. 
Our people, God's chosen people, are the prisoners of the entire planet Earth. And it's time for us to get up out of there. That's and we read how, how to get up out of there in the scriptures. Why trim your way seeking love from a people that don't give a good goddamn about you? I'm not going to keep trimming my way seeking love. I'm going to stand on what's right. I'm going to stand on what's honorable. And, then, and listen, and then whoever can get down with that with respect, then we can move from there. But again, black, Hispanic, and Native Indian, man, woman, and child, we need to demand the respect from the people that we've been com compromising our ways and ourselves to try to be loved by. Go ahead. It says, therefore, hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. Not only do we trim our ways to seek love, then we become this some, some sort of influence for wickedness, which is a proverb and a byword that we read in the book of Deuteronomy 28 that we read to you earlier. If we don't listen to the ways of God, we're not going to be on high. We're going to be below. Right? You got that second Corinthians? This is the reason why we need to be holy. What does the word holy mean? It means to be separate. Right? Holy means to be separate. This is the reason why we need to be separate because we've been compromising ourselves trying to be loved by people. The scriptures tell us even more. Read the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Read. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. It says don't be equal, unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. How are we unequally yoked with, with unbelievers? Because we got one people believing that this is the place, this is the most utopic place, this is the greatest place on the planet Earth, and that we need to blend in and, and, and to live harmoniously, harmoniously with them here. They feel like that on one side. And then on the other side, we're sitting here saying like, damn, where's the repercussion for our enslavement, for our free labor, for the rape, rob, and murder of our people? We're not yoked with these people because the, the true belief in justice just on a level of justice, we don't share the same sentiment. We don't share, we don't share the same ideas. So what happens is how can you be unequally yoked together with people that don't rock with you in the same way? That's where we turn and we trim our ways. We say, well, I, I don't need to be paid back for all of the atrocities you've done to me and my ancestors. Can you just treat me fairly? And then they say, okay, we'll treat you fairly, right? They'll say it. Then they'll turn around, they'll gun us down in the streets. They'll kidnap our people. They'll do all of these different things. And then when we go and we complain and say, did you guys agree and say you was going to love us? They say, oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Okay, uh, Juneteenth is a federal holiday now. They just made Juneteenth a federal holiday, what, some months ago? Damn near a year ago. You think our people are getting, do you think our people got that Monday off? Like people got today off? Hell no. You declared it a that. You declared it a federal holiday. Why aren't, aren't you exemplifying that? Why aren't you giving our people paid holidays like you do the Fourth of July? Today's Monday. All of these people usually would be at work right now, but they're not because they got the day off. Because it's a federal holiday. They don't treat us the same way. They throw little BS in our face and then do slick, crazy stuff behind our back. Get that. Uh, uh, I said 55. I mean Psalms 55. All of this stuff is right here in this in the book that they have cherry-picked and fed us for so long and they never read these scriptures. For all his sons and his daughters won't feel the sins with faces iniquities of they father bloodthirstiest of our nation not for living water waiting to put that work in Hamashiach gives that out prepare slaughter for all his sons and his daughters won't feel the sins with faces iniquities of they father bloodthirstiest of our nation not for living water waiting to put this work in Hamashiach gives that out